Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. In Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 and 19, the Bible says in verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, it says, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creature, it says, it waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. That creation was subject unto vanity, not willfully, talking about the case of Adam now, and then that, that there is a groaning in creation that is waiting for the glorious liberty. There is a kind of liberty that true sons would bring, even to creation. And may that happen through your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior and King. Jesus is described in Scripture as Savior, and he's also described in scripture as king. These dimensions, even though um, it is the same Jesus, but the modus operandi in dealing with these dimensions are not the same. Are we together? And very quickly, I want us to just explore from scripture. So the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 2 and verse 11, let's do a bit of Bible study. Luke 2, 11. These are the scriptures that attest to the fact that it is scriptural to call Jesus Savior. For unto us is born this day, the angels now speaking, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So without confusion, the Bible tells us that Jesus came to the earth as Savior. There is his ministry and his role as Savior. Luke 19 and verse 10. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. It says, for the Son of Man is come to seek and save that which is lost. Jesus himself is speaking here. And he made it clear that his purpose of coming was to seek and to save the lost. Being a savior himself. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. I hope we love the Bible. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 15. It says... This is a faithful saying, Paul mentoring his son in the gospel, Timothy, and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul is speaking now. So we know from scripture, are we together, that Jesus Christ came and one of the dimensions that was revealed was Jesus as Savior. A final scripture, Titus chapter 2 and verse 13. Titus 2 and verse 13. Let's read together if you can see it projected. Ready? One to read. Looking for that blessed hope, uh huh, and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So I've used these scriptures to prove to you that the Bible is very clear as to the fact that there is a dimension of Jesus as he walked upon the earth as Savior. What is the implication of Jesus being Savior? Being Savior meant that he came to save sinners, like Paul would admit that he was chiefest of them. In fact, the Bible is very clear as to the fact that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. It is the dimension of Jesus as Savior that necessitates the gospel are we together now when you talk about what we know as the gospel the gospel is a revelation of jesus as savior it is the most concise capture of his ministry as savior if you want to explain jesus as savior you cannot explain his ministry as savior outside of the understanding of the gospel because it is in exploring the gospel that you really see him being revealed as savior let me summarize the gospel for you according to scripture are we still here 
first corinthians chapter 15 we'll read the first four verses i love paul paul was a very intelligent man he was not just spiritual his exegesis of scripture was with intelligence he was speaking to the people hoping that they would learn are we together and learn in such a way that they could also go and teach others so let's hear what paul has to say about the gospel i'm reading from verse one to four follow carefully moreover brethren I declare to you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Look at his introduction, verse 2. He says, by which ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. What is the gospel then? For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture verse 4 it says and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to scripture this is paul's summary of the gospel that this incarnate one we call jesus that when he walked upon the earth as a demonstration of his love are we together and to honor God's system of justice because the Bible says that the soul that sin it, it shall die. It's a law. Any soul that sins should die. That means if God should remain just, every man on earth should die. So Jesus came, the Bible says, as a substitute. The price of death would not be negotiated. It's just who will do the dying. Are we together now? So Jesus now came in our place. So if you are to summarize the gospel of salvation as we know, the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the Father's love. Listen carefully. Demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Man and creation being the object of that sacrifice. If you do not believe this, number one, you are not a Christian. Are we together? Because this is the foundation the entrance of the kingdom happens by receiving a kind of message not every message brings you to the kingdom i think this is very important just because it was preached from the bible does not mean it brings salvation there is an exact information about jesus you must believe to be saved believing jesus was a good man is important and true but that is not what constructs salvation are we together many believers believe many things about jesus when it has to do with believing jesus the truth is everybody believes him including demons the bible says they believe and they tremble but the issue is what do you believe about jesus not everything about jesus administers salvation you must believe it and you must train yourself to really know what information about jesus say who has believed our report are we together now yes that Jesus came as the incarnate one, the incarnate of the Father, right? Born of the Virgin Mary, the Bible says he walked and lived a sinless life. Even though tempted in every way, the Bible agrees to the fact that he was without sin. Are we together now? Yes. And that he did not come to die a death for something he did wrong. He came in my place and your place to satisfy the legal claims of justice. That any man who sins, the penalty is death non-negotiable so as an act of love he says joshua selman instead of paying the price for your sin which you cannot in fact because our righteousness is as filthy rags now he's moved me aside as an act of his mercy and now stood in my place are we together now thank you and the bible tells us that the journey that began from the upper room where they had the last supper is that true and then he moved from there to a place called Gethsemane where he would pray thrice repeating the same words father if it be thy will take this cup from off me he says but nevertheless not my will your will be done from that place Judas betrayed him and then the journey began what we now know theologically as the passion of the Christ stood before Pontius Pilate to make defense of all the accusations and many things were asked him there to cut the long story short from that point jesus was beaten and he was taken to golgotha he hung upon that cross and there were seven words that he said when he was on the cross the last of them 
is it is finished when he said that the bible declares that he gave up the ghost am i right on that and then that something happened within the temple the veil tore from top to bottom and the people were confused they did not know what happened the the, the atmospheric condition changed everything changed then the scene upon the earth was over nobody else knew what happened until paul came by revelation the other things that jesus said we needed to know it was paul that helped us imagine using the gospels alone to know salvation there are many things we would not know it was paul that started telling us the spiritual side of that thing that when jesus died because when sinners die they go to hades the place of the dead so when jesus died as sin not a sinner as sin the embodiment of sin he now went to the place of the dead and all the cohorts of darkness were upon him forcing him to bow what is him bowing acknowledging lordship to bow acknowledging the lordship of satan remember satan negotiated using business and it didn't work and he said no, since I, I tried to make a deal and it did not work it will be by force and when the legal claims of justice were met the bible says i'm saying this do not think what i'm saying is elementary the authority and the power you command is predicated upon this understanding there is no superstition about commanding power as a child of god this is the frame that builds your authority many people in an attempt to walk in power do not understand this and demon spirits will vet your understanding before they obey you this is what makes them say paul i know jesus i know you are just coming with greek and hebrew but i do not see you founded upon an understanding are we together now so the bible declares that when the legal claims of justice were met same paul by revelation giving us what happened the bible says he made a public show of them triumphing over them in it are we together we add paul's revelation to that of apostle peter peter now tells us that he went to hades the place of the dead and preached the gospel to the departed saints who were there are we together now and they believing he opened the prison doors and led captivity captive that, that he, he led the captives out and then the Bible now says that when he resurrected, he was no longer the only begotten. He became the first begotten. It's in your Bible that when Jesus resurrected, one of the synoptic accounts that graves opened and the departed saints walked around the streets of Jerusalem. Are we together? So Jesus, by that single act, when he defeated Satan, he defeated hell he defeated the grave on his way coming back to the earth that was where there was the discussion found in psalms 21 psalms 24 lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors you see those gates and those doors were spirits nobody has ever been called from the realm of the spirit back to the earth without somebody from the earth doing the calling so who is calling you jesus from the earth because the law of resurrection is that there must be someone on earth who does the calling but now no man on earth could call jesus back and yet he wanted to re-enter the earth so the gate said no we cannot open who is this king of glory then there was a reply the lord strong and mighty listen remember psalm 24 starts by saying the earth is the lord's so if you are the real owner of a house you don't need anybody's permission to enter your house every other person who is a tenant you have to work with the terms the landlord has given you so when the gates refused to open there was an answer this is the lord himself and the gates opened and when he resurrected the bible says while he was walking across the garden made mary saw him and she wanted to touch him she shouted rabboni i said don't touch me i'm not yet done there is still something else paul would teach us now what happened in the tabernacle in heaven that he was going to carry his blood and play two roles at the same time the role of the high priest and the role of the lamb are we together because in ancient times the age of the lamb determined the validity of the atonement so they were mandated to carry a lamb that was one year old 
now Jesus the lamb who does not have age he now offered his own blood so for you to know how long the atonement was is you have to calculate the age of the lamb that died that's why the Bible says worthy is the lamb that was slain and he poured his blood upon that heavenly tabernacle to atone for the sins of men once and for all when that happened the next and the final program that will seal redemption was his coronation the psalmist saw this the lord said to my lord sit thou at my right hand until i make thy enemies thy footstool are we together yes philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 5 to 11 it gives us a, a concise capture of that coronation service the bible says that wherefore god had so highly exalted him and it was during that coronation service that a name was given to him the name there is an office it's not just a means of identification no jesus was not the name given to him he was already being called jesus on earth the name that was conferred upon him is the name lord that every tongue should confess that that jesus has now become lord that is a language of royalty are we together now if you believe everything i've said it say amen yeah. this is what you must believe to be a genuine christian now i i please don't be offended but i'm very concerned at how many people became christians it matters what you were told what you said amen to and what you gave your life to or who you gave your life to to become a christian are we together yes so jesus the savior is captured in the exegesis of the gospel this was the message on the day of pentecost the bible says when the holy ghost came upon them the people heard these guys roaring in the spirit and speaking in all kinds of languages and when they came they said don't mind these mad men they are taking advantage of the occasion to drink shame on you you are drinking early in the morning and peter said no we are not drunk this is only in the morning he said but this is that then he began to teach he moved from joel he moved from joel down to the psalmist and at the end of it he said this same jesus whom you have crucified has together been today been exalted as lord and christ the bible now says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what do we do is that true and it says repent for the remission of your sins and that you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children to your children's children as many as are far off even those that the lord himself will call and 3,000 people were added to the church that day. So Jesus as Savior is responsible for the administration of salvation. Now watch this. Let me tell you a few things that are very important. When you are discussing the gospel and you are discussing Jesus as Savior, man does not have any role to play there. Because man is described when you are discussing jesus as savior man is a victim helpless with no power to help himself the only role man has to play in that entire discussion is to believe in the finished work of christ everything was done by jesus christ himself the death the price the penalty the resurrection ours is just to believe and the bible declares that in believing among the many things we receive number one is righteousness number two we receive the life of god's way as we call it it's beyond eternal life eternal life is wonderful but there is a richer and greater description it is the life of god are we together now yes what do i receive when i believe the gospel it's important for us to know for you to know what you receive when you receive the gospel you must know what we lost there are three things that man lost in the garden of eden if you're writing please write this down three things that man lost in the garden of eden number one man lost righteousness 
E.W. Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, inferiority, or condemnation. Are we still together? So man lost righteousness. Number two, man lost dominion. Control over the earth. The Bible says that he had put the earth in subjection to man. But now man had lost that capacity to wield dominion upon the earth. Number three and most importantly, man lost the life of God. Captured in the person we call the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not bring the life of God. The Holy Spirit is the life of God. Are we together? Yes. So these are the three things man lost. And these are the three things that redemption sought to bring back. Restoration of righteousness, that relationship that had been severed. Are we together? And then the Bible says it this way. Christ has delivered us from the curse of the law. Are we still together? It says, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon we the Gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. hallelujah someone is carrying this revelation tonight and you will stand in front of situations and circumstances and say in the name of jesus the realm of the spirit will know you know what you are saying you know what was invested in that name you know what name you have become part of your words will no longer be empty because revelation gives life to your speakings are we together you will now begin to speak over people over nations over situations and you will watch things shift the difference is that you are now supported by revelation someone will go back home tonight and say i i came to church and i heard that jesus christ said it is finished that means any other thing that is left that the devil wants to continue i have the power to enforce that finished work of christ you believe that shout a loud amen, amen. are we together now please pay attention this is the body of knowledge that introduces the believer into the kingdom experience jesus as savior whatever else you know about jesus if in order of priority you do not know him as savior you are not in the kingdom please listen carefully if for any reason you stumbled across an intelligent lecture that taught him as a healer taught him as a deliverer all of that is wonderful but until you encounter jesus as savior the bible says this is the record please listen believers that god hath given us so way that eternal life but he constructed the administration of eternal life such that you must encounter the son to have that life that means if you claim you are a recipient of that life without an encounter with the son so dr olumide manuel tells me apostle you are going to have this mic but to have this mic i have i have assigned this man to hold that mic if you later see me holding the mic and i tell you i never met that man it means i stole or i'm lying or i have a fake is that true so for me to access that mic i must be able to refer to the person he recommended there is no other name the bible says under heaven given unto men it's not like he gave many options and then you choose from no there is only one name with power to save with power to save there are many great names, but there's only one name. Our God is champion. He reigns forevermore. Forevermore. That means when you want to lead people to be saved, make sure you lead them beyond a pastor make sure you lead them beyond an apostle we are only ushers if they stop at us they were not saved they must move beyond us to get to that name 
It is the name of the Lord that is a strong tower, the Bible says. Neither is there salvation in any, for there is no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved. In Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10, this is the most concise theological basis for the administration of salvation. Please give it to us. The Bible says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Please look up. That means in receiving the life of God, there are two parts of you that must participate. Listen carefully, please. Your heart and your mouth. Not your heart alone, not your mouth alone. That means if you do come out here, like I'll be calling later on for altar call, if it's only your mouth that is coming, carry your heart along. Because it must be your heart first, then your mouth. Let's finish the scripture. The word is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lordship of Jesus. And that you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. There is an assurance that is backed by the integrity of God. That thou shalt be saved. The law is in the next verse. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is the gospel. This is what the apostles taught that brought 3,000 people that multiplied the church. Any other thing that is taught is not the gospel. The gospel centers around Jesus and his finished work as a communication of his love and compassion. Are we together? Our assignment is to receive by faith now. This leads me to the continuation of my discussion. As powerful as what I have said is, this is only the starting point of the believer's experience. There is a very serious side effect when you leave believers with only this understanding. Please look up. As powerful as what I have told you is, it would have been the most powerful message if rapture would happen immediately. But the fact that you are still around, as wonderful as this message is, if this is the only thing you know, your eternal destiny is secured, but your efficiency in the kingdom will be greatly threatened. You will be surprised how ineffective you will be. Are we together? And so for those who have done well in communicating the gospel with precision, salutations go to them across the globe. And that is wonderful because it is in doing that that believers have entrance into the kingdom. But ladies and gentlemen, there is more. There is more. There are other dimensions to Jesus that need to be known for the overall efficiency of the believer. This is where trouble comes from. Because for most people, they do not know any other thing else. So they know him as savior. Uh-huh. But then you find out that they are not able to do a lot more because they do not know the program of God. They do not know the kingdom. Why then did he give gifts to men when he said it is finished? The Bible says he led captivity captive. Are we together? Ephesians chapter 4. And gave gifts to men. What gifts again? Men to men. To some he gave apostles. To some he gave prophets. To some he gave evangelists. Pastors and teachers. And the Bible says for the maturing of the saints. Not the maturing of sinners. So you mean those saints that believe Jesus as Savior? That is not all. There is still a lot more to be done. For the perfecting, the maturing of the saints. That the saints now mature would do the work of the ministry. That we all together will come into the fullness of Christ. The Bible says into a perfect man. Into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The Bible says not to stow and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men. Wherein they lie to deceive. This is what your Bible says. That means there is a deeper experience. That is not to demean and downplay what has happened. It is the same Jesus 
but there are different dimensions to him are we together the same way isaiah 11 talks about what we know to be the seven spirits of god talks about the spirit of dominion the spirit of the lord talks about the spirit of wisdom and understanding is that in your bible talks about the spirit of counsel and of might then it talks about the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord that means you can encounter the spirit of wisdom and yet not have the spirit of might and yet all of them are engendered by the same spirit thou shall anoint joshua in whom is the spirit he already had the spirit yet god told moses to still lay hands on him and later on you will see that what joshua received was the spirit of wisdom from the impartation of moses are we together now jesus as savior captured in the gospel does the bible say any other thing about jesus particularly him being king let's explore very quickly isaiah 9 and verse 6 isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 i'm introducing jesus as king isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 remember isaiah's prophecy unto us a child is born the bible declares a son is given then he now begins to use the language of royalty and government he says the government shall be upon his shoulder in ancient times you had no business having this information except you were king or you were leader are we together and he says his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god everlasting father the prince of peace and and so on and so forth then he now says of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end where upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom jesus as king second scripture john 12 15 john chapter 12 and verse 15 it says fear not o daughter of zion behold thy king cometh sitting on an ass's colt or a donkey's colt other versions will tell you this was a prophetic word about the triumphant entry of Jesus. They were making reference to it. By what, by what audacity do you want to have a triumphant entry into Jerusalem? And they made reference that there was a prophetic word like that. That upon a donkey's colt, the king will march triumphantly into Jerusalem. Scripture number three. Are you learning? Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. Revelation 17 and verse 14. Hear what the Bible says. These shall make war with the Lamb. The final battle now. And the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. That Lamb that was slain is not only a Savior. He is the Lord of Lords and is the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. God is with us and he shall reign he shall reign he shall reign forevermore he's not just a savior he's king and the bible says when it has to do with war with the nations in the battle of Armageddon he's not coming as savior he sits as a rider upon the horse in his majestic power and royalty the bible says he had a name written on his lamb that name is the word of god and that fire came a sword came out of his mouth and devoured the nations this is the king that we serve it matters that you know him as king one last scripture still the same revelation chapter 19 and verse 16 revelations 19 and verse 16 i like us to read together if you love jesus ready read please and he hath on his vesture and on his tie the name written king of kings and lord of lords this settles once and for all that jesus is not only savior jesus is king and if you must explore all the dimensions of jesus that makes for the efficiency of the believer because the bible says looking up to jesus so you don't just look up to Savior Jesus. You must also look up to King Jesus. There are implications of the dimensions you find in him. 
Are we together? So I said how that when you discuss Jesus as Savior, man does not have any active role there. It was all done by Savior, Jesus. We only became privileged recipients of that expression of love and mercy and benevolence. But please look up now. When the Lord begins to reveal himself to you as king, the entire dynamics of your Christian experience changes because in the revelation of Jesus as king, man is no longer a weak, helpless sinner. When you reveal Jesus as king, man is now a responsible son of the kingdom and then an ambassador of the kingdom. The dynamics of the operations change. A savior man is a weak, helpless person in need of mercy. But the moment you bring that royalty dimension, we are no longer the weak people just waiting for mercy. Number one, we are sons of the kingdom because we are part of the king's family. Are we together? Then number two, we have a mandate. Man has a responsibility. Most believers are not matured and cannot do so much within the cosmos because they have not met Christ as king. They do not understand the entire discourse of the kingdom. Man is no longer a weak, I wrote here, helpless being, but a responsible son and a citizen of the kingdom. Please listen to me. When Jesus is revealed as king, there is a twofold mandate that man has. One is to the king and the other is from the king to the nations please listen when jesus is revealed as king man has a mandate number one an obligation now to the king then an obligation from the king to the nations you have to understand this what is our mandate to the king please write our mandate to the king is complete loyalty surrender and obedience complete loyalty surrender and obedience this is the mandate of every citizen of the kingdom to the king our mandate to the king is loyalty surrender and obedience this is the creed of every true kingdom citizen it is the signature that defines your responsibility within the kingdom is no longer the weakness and irresponsibility that comes by saying i am helpless at this point you have been empowered by the spirit so you are not helpless we have a mandate in honor to the king we owe him number one our loyalty number two our surrender number three our obedience Listen to me. I know you are in the kingdom, which is also a measure of your spiritual maturity. When I find these tripartite factors working in your life, the more you mature as a believer, that sense of spiritual independence begins to leave you. In fact, the Bible says it this way, Jesus speaking to Simon Peter, he said, when you are young, you are allowed to go wherever you want to go. John 21, he says, but when you become old, another will have to hold your hands and will lead you to a place that you may not even want. You are constrained. Here's how Paul says it. The love of God constrains us. This creed got to Paul so much, he would boldly identify himself. I, Paul, a bond servant. That's the language of kingdom. That's the language of matured believers. That is the language of those who will be trusted. I'm going to be showing you three levels of authority as a reward for working with the king. There are three levels of authority that God confers upon men, his sons and citizens in the kingdom when you have a track record of loyalty of surrender and of obedience to the king now watch this when jesus is revealed as savior the gift is equal no matter who you are no matter what you do are we together to the baby who was born and the person who has lived most righteous in the flesh and the greatest sinner when you all come it is the same gift you are given rewards only happen when you come to the kingdom 
at that point you will now know that not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are rewards he gave on to some he gave on to some he loves everybody equally but the distribution of spiritual possibilities now are according to these three things this is what separates men into the kingdom you find out that some seem to be more anointed some seem to be trusted with certain levels i am telling you that it is not governed by the love of god it is governed by the degree to which they have understood the kingdom and they have pledged in experience their loyalty let's repeat it loyalty surrender and obedience one more time loyalty surrender now look up when you give your life to christ uh let me say something not, not, not to insult what we have known but i hope you know that in the revelation of jesus as savior you don't really give your life to jesus as we say i know we say it as preachers but what we mean classically speaking you can't give your life there's something already wrong with that life are we together now so what happens is you receive of his life giving of your life happens in the kingdom that is what we call surrender when you give your life you pour it like a drink offering that is the language of kingdom people so salvation is a receiving thing there is nothing you are giving God when Jesus is revealed as Savior absolutely nothing you are not doing me any favor you are not giving him anything the language of surrender is it not in your bible romans chapter 12 and verse 1 i beseech you therefore brethren it says by the message of god is that in your bible that ye offer uh, yourselves that's the that's it there present yourself <laughs> your bodies in fact as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god and the bible calls it your reasonable act of service are we together that is the price for being used by god not receiving surrender so when you come to the king you will now begin to learn that in the kingdom listen carefully please don't miss this in the kingdom the entire economy of the kingdom revolves around the will of the king write that word will down please w-i-l-l will the will of the king thank you the will of the king is a description of his desire his agenda and his intention that means the investment of the kingdom that follows any citizen is to the degree to which you have demonstrated willingness to bring to pass the will of the king jesus began to give the people a kingdom sense in matthew chapter 6 when he taught them what we know to be the lord's prayer in teaching the lord's prayer this is what jesus said that when you pray pray thus our father are we together which art in heaven he says hallowed be your name He's not saying recite it or repeat it, even though that is beneficial. He's teaching the protocol to approaching God. I'm not teaching on that. Hopefully, maybe in one of the sessions we'll touch on it. Our Father means that you have to come to God knowing that He's the ultimate source or sustainer. Comes from the word Abba. That means when you come to God, there's no plan B. You don't come hoping there are many alternatives. You must come with this revelation that He is. So, our Father second line of the prayer which art in heaven that means he's in a dimension that is not physical so faith will be needed for your contact which is in a realm that is not physical are we together now number three hallowed be your name come with the spirit of reverence and come in honor to all his multifaceted dimensions i hope you know the name he's talking about hallowed be your name there are many names that he was called that you come in reverence because all the answers you will be receiving you will be receiving is captured in one or more of his names if you are coming to ask for supplies it's Jaira that will answer you if you are coming in need are, are we together now so it says to hallow be your name then the next line says your kingdom the governing influence of your person your kingdom comes how by your will being done in the earth I know that this rendition puts a full stop there and sincere effort by translators but there's not supposed to be a full stop there 
the next line explains how the kingdom come that your kingdom comes anywhere your will is done so when you want the kingdom of god to come find out what his will is his kingdom means his influence when you see a sick person what is the will of god there so the only way to bring the kingdom to come is to execute the will of god over that sick body are we together thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth he didn't say on earth he says in earth and the first earth is you then your environment let me repeat you that earthen vessel then the environment forget about the environment when the kingdom finds expression in you you now become a perfect description of heaven in its entirety do you know what it means for the kingdom to come in you that means everything that has not been planted that means everything that is not a reflection of the kingdom you have the authority to root it out this is what gives us the basis to rebuke sickness and declare over your life that I, in the name of jesus i go from glory to glory what are you doing you are enforcing the will of god is someone learning tonight now many believers wonder why we were saved by the same blood please look up everybody saved by the same blood the same savior yet the efficiency of certain believers with respect to the program of god with respect to kingdom come and it looks as though there seems to be a bias it looks like god has a particular have, have you wondered why it looks like god just isolated a few people and decided to invest his attention invest his grace i am telling you that that disparity did not come from the revelation of jesus as savior it is the king dimension that produced that disparity because when you know jesus as king you will now know that god himself has a program and that everyone who willfully subscribes to the making of that program to happen experientially truly becomes a friend of god and secures certain levels of investment upon his life hmm. are we together so he saved me i didn't do anything I just received it but now that I know him as king I realize that the king has a program and as a faithful son in gratitude to what he did as Savior I become an eternal partner I spend myself without feeling bad this is why you see we seem to spend ourselves like madmen the the revelation of him being Savior empowers us to serve him as king and we serve him wholeheartedly are we together if he gave his all and his best for me what is my energy that i'm spending for him i do this because number one i love him but i do this because it is a joy and an honor to see the king smile because of me when he gave five talent two talent and one the bible says when they went and traded it and made five two remember he they brought joy to him and he said well done good and faithful servant please hear me god has a program that program is not engineered by the savior the program is engineered by the king what is god's program listen carefully what exactly is god's program i hope that we'll talk some more about that this is a kingdom conference because let me tell you if you want to secure certain dimensions of the power and the grace of god is more than just praying and saying lord you died for me the theology that leaves the believer just receiving receiving alone and stopping there respectfully speaking i submit to you it's not a responsible and balanced theology there is a responsibility component the bible says we are saved not by works but unto good works is that in your bible yes in ephesians chapter 2 i believe in verse 10 give it to us please 2 and 10 and i hope god is speaking to us we'll find somewhere to pray let's read together if you're a responsible christian one to read for we are his workmanship uh-huh created in christ jesus help me unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in them.
Do you believe that scripture? Now go to the same Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Ephesians 3 and verse 10. Let's read together. One to read. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So there is a responsibility that is given to the believer. We were not just saved to roam around. There is a responsibility component. This is where kingdom teachings like purpose. This is where kingdom teachings like the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Discipleship is the key that mentors new believers to become people of stature and maturity. Because now we begin to teach them doctrine, methodically communicated, line upon line. Now believers now start seeing the value of prayer. If you do not know Jesus as king, many things that are taught in the church, will not, you will not see their value. What is the value of warfare? What forces are you fighting against? All that you know is it is finished. Why must I give to the kingdom? What kingdom? Why must I spend my life? Why should I contend for longevity when my name is already written in the Lamb's book of life? It is the revelation of the king and the kingdom that gives value to all these forces, systems of advantage that we spend time teaching believers. Unfortunately, we are mentoring a lot of believers who do not see the applicability of the things we are teaching. So when you teach someone that is the will of God to be a billionaire, that sounds ridiculous and it sounds like carnality until they understand that the king's business will require that degree of financial investment. Are you getting the point now? When you teach someone that I will live 70, 80, 90, 100 years and the person says in this wicked world, until you find out that your longevity is profitable for the kingdom. Are we together now? Yes. What does it mean to raise responsible and godly children who transform society? You may not see the need for it until you find out that you're raising these godly children is giving God more bodies that can serve his purposes. So now you're raising the children does not just become a parental responsibility. It turns to a ministry. So many things that we're teaching in the body only find their value when you know Jesus as king. And when you now come to the kingdom, now you begin to understand. Ah, so I see. Do you know why many believers backslide? And do you know why many believers become unserious? Because the purpose component in your work with God is unveiled when you know Christ as King. Now you know that there are kingdom responsibilities beyond just getting up, going to a job, getting married, ha having children and dying. You now begin to tie your life to something, an agenda and a cause that is bigger than you. This now makes your Christian experience exciting. There is a reason to go to bed. There is a reason to get up in the morning and you can measure the degree to which you are bringing joy to the king. You can know God is pleased with you. God himself speaking about Jesus said, this is my beloved son. He said, in whom I am well pleased. At the Mount of Transfiguration, he said, I am well pleased. And he says to hear him. Please hear me. The revelation of Jesus as Savior, let me repeat one last time, brings two responsibilities upon the believer. Number one, your mandate to the king loyalty surrender and obedience to the will of the king sir the assignment of the power of god the assignment of the word of god the assignment of angels the assignment of the holy spirit all of these spiritual forces only work within the circumference of the will of god the power of God cannot operate outside of the will of God. The assignment of the power of God is to bring anything that is outside the will of God into alignment. Are we together? So if you are sick, that sickness is not the will of God. So the assignment of the healing anointing is to compel that condition to now reflect the will of God. 
the will of God is the believer's zone of safety. Outside the will of God, there is no guarantee of protection, preservation. Are we together now? The entire life of the believer in the kingdom revolves around the will of God. So our first mandate is to be able to give up your will. Now, you see, the way God operates huh, is because he's a God of love. He left you with your will so that relinquishing your will to take his will becomes an act of volition not force he still left you with your will that means you can receive jesus as savior and say god i make my choice that i'm not interested in your will he will respect you but the consequences that follow neglecting his will will also come are we together I can choose today as an act of my will that I do not want to serve the mandate God gave me as a man of God. I can, and you will respect it. I can today get up and say, ladies and gentlemen, I am tired of ministry and I'm announcing to you that I'm still a Christian. It's only that I'm not, I, I choose. And heaven will respect it. But your bishop, no, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> you don't know what we have held on this journey. My brother, we died long ago, long ago, long ago, long ago, long ago. It's only people who are alive that can choose. Are we together? So watch this. When you begin to walk with the Holy Spirit as you get saved, you find out that God begins to lead you to faces. Eventually, some of you can be three, four people, maybe in a prayer group. You may be maybe friends on campus. Maybe, you know, people doing the same work. Eventually, as you walk with God, the mandate of the king starts diverging you people to different places. Somebody now starts developing an appetite for prayer and fasting that he cannot explain. Another person starts developing an appetite for wealth and abundance that he may even feel guilty and say, is it that I really like money? Is the king separating you because his mandate? This is the second part. Your mandate to the king is your loyalty, your surrender, and your obedience. But your mandate from the king to the nations is what you call purpose. Is what you call assignment. Are we together? When you come to Jesus and say, Lord, what is my purpose? He says, that's not the issue. Let me verify the issue of your loyalty first. The mission is follow me, not follow it. When you follow me, when I am sure you have gotten to a point. Ah, my soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. My soul says yes. Says yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but I'm just telling you a story. In experience, it can take you 10 years to finally surrender your will. This will thing we're talking about as if it just happens in a weekend. It is a long journey. A long journey of, of listen, he will start touching all the things that matter to you until nothing is left. Now, this is the part of the Christian faith that many believers do not know. This is what separates men and makes others so powerful in the spirit. The journey to maturity is not an easy thing. This is where he says, take up your cross. What is the cross? You know what the cross is? Dying daily. That someday God can just tell you, okay, you just, he will wait till you get your arrears. You've not been paid six months. As soon as it lands, he says, my son, I heard you pray three days ago and you were rolling on the ground. Carry that seed. It's not about the money. He can make someone to give you ten times. There is an idol he's removing from your heart. It's not about the money at all. Why will he call Abraham? In Genesis chapter 12, watch this. I'm showing you the portrait. Abraham had met him. He called him in awe of the Chaldeans as an idol worshiper. And he began to propose certain blessings. Abraham thought it would just come like that. Genesis chapter 12 will only be fulfilled when he got to chapter 22. One morning, 
Abraham is sleeping and he hears a voice from heaven and he says Abraham get up take thee thy son uh -uh. is this part of the plan you didn't there was no discussion about this thy only son whom thou lovest he says go and offer him upon a mount that I will show you that means he did not even know where he was going to today we say Abraham's blessings are mine you are right but Abraham's responsibility must also be yours now I'm not being sarcastic ladies and gentlemen listen listen this is a kingdom meeting that's why you see it's not good to judge people because you don't know what face someone is you will see people as if they are total failures there is a walking that God is doing in them the king is purging them you will find somebody who graduated three years ah I just sense the power of God as I just made this statement three years five years others are going forward and you are still behind God who did I offend I served you on campus what what are you trying to do with my life hear me when the king begins to walk on you he does not walk on you as a group even if you are husband and wife he will isolate you with a surgeon's precision and begin to work on you I'm saying this because some of you are in that season now you do not even know it's true that there is a prophet in the making but you just thought that having the vision of the prophet then the next thing anointing will come you don't even know the name of your journey right now with God you are a prophet but he told you to go and walk with the ushers and you are cleaning the toilets and say God is it if if, if I'm is it this is my will do it and you are wondering ah the way of the spiritual man is hard this is why when God finally anoints them he suffers no man to do them wrong he can even reprove kings because before the anointing comes blood must be dripping on that altar I hope you believe what I'm telling you you want authority over nations you want authority over territories it's not about English no it takes more than that there is a track record in the spirit that you cannot fake that cannot be politicized are we together Jesus I know look at Paul Paul met Jesus the Savior he thought that was all the journey of Paul will start for the next 19 years locked in the wilderness of Arabia not knowing what even Jesus himself when he was born with all the prophecies on his head he met two prophets already Anna the prophetess she spoke to him Simeon the prophet he spoke to him plus the fact that he is the word for 18 years you will call Jesus a failure 18 years the same Jesus who will be your savior the Bible goes silent about Jesus if Jesus were your son would say I don't know what kind of prophecy I receive on your bed but 18 years of a useless life and the next time we hear of Jesus he's age 30 you would call him a failure by our statistics 30 you've not begun anything in your life with all the opportunities there good mother responsible father and yet it was at that 30 when he was coming John said behold the lamb he could not say that about the 12 year old Jesus watch this when he announced when when John announced Jesus and baptized him you would thought immediately you would think that immediately after that ministry should start the Bible said the same spirit now drove him to the wilderness <laughs> so Jesus goes to the wilderness no friends no counselors no nothing and he's praying like a madman how do you pray when you are the word praying about what when it is the word that solves all problems not even Jesus was spared from this pattern I'm explaining it to someone right now this is a kingdom conference you don't preach what I'm saying in a crusade ground no you reveal Jesus as Savior come as you want you see people just laughing they don't know that the kind of journey and, and you are not lying you are not lying 
Are we together? We'll look for somewhere and pray now. So, Jesus is done fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And guess who came? Satan. Satan. Your Satan. Why do you think he should fear you? When he came to... How do you finish praying and fasting? And the first person you see are not angels. Say, well done. Satan. And when he got there, he acted as if he did not know that Jesus was serious with the Father. You are hungry. Don't lie. Don't deny it. You are hungry. Turn this stone to bread. And Jesus said, it is written. Then the Bible says he took him to a high pinnacle, the holy city, and said, fall down. For it is also written, he will put his angels charge over you. Satan is quoting scripture. They will bear you up upon their wings, lest ye dash your feet against a stone. Then he takes him into an exceeding high mountain. I don't have the time tonight. These are the three levels of temptation. Every man must survive. The first is about your personal self. Individualism. Turn this stone to bread. Satisfy. Use the anointing you have. Use ministry for your personal gratification. And Jesus said, no. The agenda of the kingdom is bigger than me alone. Then the next test is your spirituality. Be careless about your spiritual life. He took him up a holy mountain and said, fall down. Be careless. After all, there are angels who will preserve you. And Jesus said, no. There is a responsibility component to my work. And the final one, which is the test of influence and dominion. He took him into an exceeding... The Bible did not say he took him around. He took him on a mountain, into a mountain. And from that mountain, it's a spiritual location. You see all the glories of the world. Do you know what that means? That from that mountain, you watch the control room of the cosmos. This is what makes other nations blessed. This is what births fraternities and groups. And he said, listen, I am the God of this world. This is a control room. We can negotiate this with you. Ladies and gentlemen, when you truly walk with God, you will get to a level in the spirit where this same offer will be given to you. I promise you. Listen, listen, it's a difficult offer. Except, look, if you've not risen to certain levels, this message would not make sense to you. But you will rise to a level where the devil will say, you are going to be great anyway. Come. You will now understand why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? If he gains, hold on, gain. Gain is a language of business. And for gain to happen, there must be an exchange. So who is the other side? Bring in the gain. Satan will collect your soul and give you the world. Many people on earth today, many of those you celebrate around the world, they were taken to that same mountain. And that negotiation happened. Unfortunately, many said, what is in my soul? Take. This is why when Satan sees you prospering, even as your soul prospers, there is a problem. Because two of them should not go hand in hand. You should not prosper as your soul prospers. That means I can verify the source of your prosperity by checking the condition of your soul while you rise. When the condition of your soul goes down as you rise, you are fraternized with Babylon. trying to be as simple as possible it was not my intention to just there we'll, we'll, we'll find somewhere and pray the king the savior the savior saves with no conditions but the king does not use without conditions you are loved without conditions but you are not used without conditions God loves everybody without conditions but he will not, when it has to do with birthing the program of God, it is not without conditions. Please hear me. I'm saying this because in this meeting and in this conference, for those who are here and those following online, there is destiny crying from the Spirit. In this end time, God is looking for men and women who he can trust. 
I'll repeat myself tomorrow, but let me just tell you three levels of authority that are given to believers in honor to their loyalty, their surrender, and their obedience to the king. Experientially, not just by confession. Lord, I love you. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. When it has to do with honoring the king, it's your life that does the speaking, not just your words. Is someone learning? Number one. The first level of authority that is given to believers in honor to your loyalty to the king is authority over things. Authority over things. The material world. Authority over things. Things like finances. Isn't it amazing that that's the least level of spiritual authority? Authority over things. You begin to have a very strange dominion over things you will call it all kinds of names but it comes from heaven in honor to your loyalty the second level are you ready now the second level is authority over nations when you read the parable of the talents study what he gave them the first thing he gave them was things talents then when they qualified the blessing was you have been faithful in this i will place you over nations do you know what it means to have authority over nations that means god will never carry out something within that nation ignoring you <laughs> can i hide this from abraham that god wants to destroy sodom and gomorrah and then he comes to meet one man to liars with him and abraham says wait i have an interest in sodom and gomorrah negotiated the release of lot authority over people and nations look when this dimension of authority comes upon you you will command a strange order of influence upon the earth many fraternities and groups upon the earth attempt to use divination to simulate this kind of influence there is a level of influence that cannot happen by social media there is a level of influence that cannot happen just by lobbying yourself. It is given in honor of your loyalty to the king. Are we together? The third and the highest level of authority that can be given to man is authority over God's program on earth. Authority over his program. That God can say for the next 10 years, this is how I am moving in Africa. I put you in charge of that program. authority over things authority over nations and authority over his program you will find out all through scripture that there were many programs that were done by god and there were individuals who spearheaded that program if it was gideon the destruction of the midianites are we together moses you find all the individuals who stood out in the bible they were not just given authority over nations there was a program that god had and it pleased the Lord that they become the ones who spearheaded that program. My call tonight, there are two calls I'm going to make as we wrap up. Call number one is for those who have not encountered Jesus as Savior. And listen, it does not matter whether you have been in church forever. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. I submit to you by the authority of Scripture that if you have not met Jesus as Savior, there is no possibility to be a recipient of eternal life he calls for you to begin a new experience an experience that imparts upon you the life of God and gives you that opportunity to know him this is eternal life he said John 17 and verse 3 that they may know you the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent when you have an encounter with Jesus you have eternal life he says this is the record that God has given us eternal life and that this life is in his son so that he that had the son had life and the second call I'm going to be making is for people here who are saying apostle now I understand that the Spirit of God has been beckoning upon me to get to a point where I relinquish my will 
for the sake of his majesty relinquishing your will does not mean you are going to become a dummy or to become daft it simply means submitting your will to his will knowing that the thoughts he thinks towards you are not thoughts of evil he says but thoughts of good to bring you a future and an expected end those who you call champions in the kingdom are men who by the grace and the mercy of God have found a place in God's program to surrender their all. You may have heard me say that the price for all of God is all of you. Not some of you. Our time is fast spent. Let me make that call now. For those who are following online from across the nations and for someone who is in this place, I'm certainly not looking for everybody but I know there's someone the Spirit of God is speaking to. You're up the balcony, you are here perhaps outside. And you're saying, Apostle, I want you to give me a chance. I sincerely want to make it right with Jesus. This is not just about church. This is not just about religion. I'm not pretending it. I want a functional relationship with Jesus that benefits my children, my children's children, and all who will come from me. If there's anyone who wants to make that call, I want you with with boldness and with gallancy leave your seat right now and may i please request that you come and stand in front of me here do not be afraid do not be ashamed come let's celebrate them as they come come i count one to five one come home come home when we recap, oh, come to Jesus softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling, calling no sinners. Calvary Bible Church, is this the best you can do for those who are coming? Come, young and old, come. Ibo Yoruba Hausa, come. Doesn't matter what has happened or what has not happened, come. Jesus is calling you. You will remember this conference for good. Come. For the sake of your children, come. For the sake of your spouse, come. For the sake of the destinies that are connected to you. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus is able to do. The Bible declares that no man cometh to the Father except by him. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making the bold decision to be here. Many of you, I presume, are coming to Jesus for the first time. Others perhaps rededicating your life. In any case, you are most welcome. The Bible says as many who will come to him, that he will in no wise cast away. And for those who are following online, as I lead them to pray, right there in your home, your office, or those who are watching by way of rebroadcast, let this be your opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Distance is no barrier when it has to do with the business of Jesus. May I request, ladies and gentlemen in front, please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Remember what I taught you. It is your heart and your mouth. So let your heart do the believing while your mouth does the confessing say this after me loud and clear say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are my Savior I believe that you are my Lord I believe that you are my King that you died for me and you rose again for my justification right now i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i declare that eternal life is imparted right now to my spirit i am a child of god the righteousness of god in christ jesus from tonight I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep the hands lifted and let me pray for you father thank you so much for these precious ones you don't have to kneel please stand gentlemen for space in the name of Jesus Christ by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven 
and i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god and in the name of jesus i declare that power is released upon you to go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus mightless name we pray now ladies and gentlemen i want you to just do me a favor would you just move to my left which will be your right there are a few counselors while we're clapping for you who will have your information very quickly and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go calvary bible church is this the best we can do for them celebrate jesus celebrate salvation hallelujah praise the lord now let me use this opportunity to just make um, just too important just to encourage you lending my voice with that of the man of God please I want you to invite everyone that you know and you find whether online or offline we're here tomorrow in the morning we have a session in the morning and then hopefully by the grace of God tomorrow night will be a miracle service it will also be a moment of impartation where some of you who have been longing to access graces and mantles and dimensions this will be your opportunity to receive from the Lord but as for this night, I declare that you are blessed. In the name of Jesus, may your heart for God, may your passion for... Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.